The world of photography is beautiful and very alluring, and everyone at least tries to open its doors at some point in their life. If you've decided to step into it and are looking for a high quality beginner camera, you've come to the right place. Let's take a look at the top 5 cameras for beginners in 2020. For more information on the products, I've included links in the description box down below which are updated for the best prices. Like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. Most beginners start off with a budget model, and rightly so, there are so many features a camera comes supplied with and getting familiar with the basics is usually easier if you don't have to pay an arm and a leg for it. If you're on a cash strap budget and are looking for an entry level camera, we recommend checking out Olympus's OM-D E-M10 Mark III. You shouldn't fret much about its optical quality even though this is a budget model as it fully supports 4K videos. It sports a 16 MPMOS sensor that's packed with true pixels. 8 image processor, which will allow you to take incredibly sharp, vivid photos and videos. What's more, this camera is capable of capturing 4K films at 120 frames per second, which is something most budget models couldn't even come close to. The main reason why this is the go-to camera for many beginners is the fact that it features a very simplistic design, namely, all of the basic features are accessible with your right hand. You'll be able to take films or photos, preview them, save them, and discard them in the easiest way possible. The LCD monitor is pretty small, 3 inches large, but on the brighter side it packs a very intuitive touchscreen design. All of the menus and effects are very simple and self-explanatory. Moreover, this camera packs a built-in 5-axis image stabilization technology that helps save you from your inner newbie. This tech removes blurs and smooths out any rough edges your photos or videos might have after you take them. The only thing that most people don't like so much about Olympus's OMDE M10 Mark III is the fact that it has only 16 megapixels. It is, after all, a budget-friendly camera, so if we take that into account, it's pretty great for the price. Even though you're just starting out, you should still try to get as much value from your camera, which is probably your first one, as possible. Although this model might not be the finest, most feature-packed and most versatile one, it beats all similarly priced cameras, and it is Sony's A6000. In comparison to our previous pick, the A6000 features 24 megapixels, the difference of 8 MP is subtle, but it goes without saying, this camera shoots better, more lifelike pictures, and takes superior videos and films. Furthermore, Sony's A6000 rocks an advanced APCSC CMOS sensor. If you're not too familiar with active pixel sensors (APCs), the quality ones can recognize and photo detect a higher amount of pixels, and they're an absolute necessity if the camera, such as A6000, features a high number of MPs. It's slightly inferior to the Olympus model in terms of high-speed shooting as it sports 11 frames per second, whereas Olympus OM-DE M10 Mark III offers 12, but again, this is a very subtle difference that most beginners wouldn't even recognize. Compatibility-wise, Sony's Alpha A6000 works perfectly well with Windows Vista SP2, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Mac OS X. This camera features a 3-inch tiltable LCD screen with approximately 921,000 dots and an OLED viewfinder. It boasts full coverage and roughly 14 million dots, which is pretty advanced for a beginner-grade camera. It also sports a memory card, but it's pretty hard to remove it due to the fact that it was placed in a relatively bad location. Furthermore, there are slightly more menus, which means that there's just a tad more versatility to expect, but they're not as well organized. What most people like the most about Alpha A6000 are its convenient compact size, picture quality, and the automatic bracketing. The latter is actually one of the biggest benefits this camera can offer, especially if you intend to take photos or clips in a poorly lit environment. However, there's one thing that even beginners find as annoying and that Sony's resolved with later versions in the Alpha series, the flash. Namely, the integrated flash is very weak and it's only usable at very close ranges. The only way to get rid of this flaw is to upgrade your A6000 with external flash, but that also means that you'll have to invest a bit more money. At the end of the day, Sony's A6000 is an exceptional camera for an up-and-coming photographer, hobbyist, or enthusiast. It offers plenty of utility features, it's versatile, and it's pretty powerful in terms of raw MP strength. Beginner photographers usually don't know the difference between mirrorless and other camera types, so before getting to the X-T200, let's briefly explain what you should expect from one. 
Generally speaking, mirrorless cameras are light, compact, and ideal for rapid photo shooting. If that's something you're looking for, we recommend checking Fujifilm's X-T200 out. In comparison to our previous picks, Fujifilm's X-T200 features a bigger 3.5-inch very angle widescreen display. This is an LCD touchscreen display that can be rotated and opened or closed up to 180 degrees, which basically means that you'll be able to handle the camera significantly easier. Furthermore, Fujifilm's X-T200 features the exquisite on-sensor phase detection system complemented with the enhanced prediction algorithm software. Simply put, you don't need to have steady hands and be well-versed and shooting angles and distances to take a professional photo or a clip. This camera also sports a top shelf face ID detection technology that greatly improves the quality of zoomed in shots. Focusing on any individual or even on groups of people should be a breeze, even from long distances. Moreover, Fujifilm's X-T200 comes supplied with ultrasonic vibration sensor cleaning system, a focal plane shutter, adjustable self-timers, a 0.39-inch viewfinder, and a myriad of film simulation modes. What really makes Fujifilm's X-T200 perfect for newbies and beginners is the fact that it's absolutely laden with automated functions and features including main subject recognition, automatic brightness detection, sharpness correction, and such. Again, these are all features that aim to improve the quality of pictures and films by automatically correcting the parameters you'd have to otherwise input yourself. Lastly, let's touch back on the beginner friendliness of this camera. It features a very simple outline of controls and settings, and it's pretty safe to say that it's among the easiest cameras to use within the price point category. Speaking of which, it is slightly more expensive than average, but it's still pretty affordable. Overall, you'll get a big LCD touchscreen, a simple configuration of features, great image quality, and a ton of auto automatic features straight out of the box. If you're a beginner who is looking for a mirrorless camera, it doesn't really get much better than Fujifilm's X-T200, so we warmly recommend that you try it out. We've just seen what one of the finest mirrorless cameras looks like, so now it's time to visit the opposite end of the spectrum, DSLR cameras. In a nutshell, DSLR cameras are slightly bulkier, a bit more complex, maybe slightly less beginner friendly, but they are also much more versatile and customizable. Beginners who manage to find a quality DSLR camera usually stick with it for years, mainly because it's easier to upgrade an existing high quality model with additional accessories or lenses than it is to save up enough money for a substantial upgrade. If you're looking for a keeper DSLR camera, we suggest Canon's EOS Rebel SL3. First of all, this camera sports 24.1 megapixels, which basically means that it's the sharpest model on our list so far. Megapixels do not amount to much on their own though, so let's Let's take a look at what else makes this camera so great. The Canon EOS Rebel SL3 features a dual pixel CMOS autofocus system with phase detection integrated into the imaging sensor. In plain words, this means that this camera combines image detection, image tweaking, and image processing, which further means that you'll need to use less features to get the same results. Furthermore, this camera model features a 63 zone dual layer sensor packed with the evaluative technology as its main mode of exposure control. It also sports a pentamirror viewfinder with approximate coverage of 95%. One of the coolest features of Canon EOS Rebel SL3 is the very angle 3 inch clear view to TFT touchscreen display that features quick control screen and camera settings as its main display options. Some beginner models struggle with the flash feature they come supplied with, but the same cannot be said for Canon EOS Rebel SL3. It rocks a built in 9.8 ISO flash that has an effective range of of up to 100 meters. In conclusion, this is one of the most versatile cameras a beginner can have, and the sheer fact that its customization potential is nearly limitless speaks volumes about its quality. We're pulling the curtain down with Nikon D3500 as our best overall pick. Surprisingly enough, this is a budget camera that just so happens to perform substantially better than similarly priced models. In short words, this is a 24.2 megapixel camera with 11 AF points, a high quality image dust reduction system, selectable picture control modes, a pentamirror single lens viewfinder, and decent exposure protection technology. In terms of type, this is a DSLR camera that is just as easy and simple to use as any mirrorless one. It features a very plain design and a highly durable, compact construction with characteristically grippy surface. 
Even though it does feature numerous selectable menus and settings, they're all self-explanatory and neatly organized in convenient spots and locations. The only thing that people don't seem to like too much about it is the lens. Namely, it's pretty limited and almost unusable in poorly lit situations, but it generally does the job pretty great. Overall, the D3500 is one of the most valuable DSLR cameras on the market. Despite being a relatively older model, it's still relevant to this day and loved even by some professionals and intermediate level photographers. Thanks for watching, and that's all for now. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Till next time, see you guys later.